All right. Hi there, everybody. We've got uh, the uh, Highlanders at the uh, Senators here in 1908. Highlanders are only two games out of first place, which is why we're seeing this one. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little bit biased. The uh, 1908 New York Highlanders are not exactly my favorite team in the world, um, but uh, we'll go ahead and play with them a little bit here. I just know that uh, given how this team was in real life, they're probably not going to be featured here for much longer. Charlie Hemphill... Rolls a 33 for a 7, and that's going to be a single over to right field to lead things off. We're at the old American League Park 2. Wikipedia tells me it was also known as National Park in uh, uh, Washington, D.C., over near where the current Howard uh, University Hospital is. That's, um, of course, where Griffith Stadium was also uh, located. It's uh, actually on the same site. Ballpark burned down in 1911 and was rebuilt in uh, steel um, uh, shortly thereafter and became Griffith Stadium. We Willie Keeler now, and he rolls an 11 for a 7. That's going to be a single over to right center field. That'll send Hemphill over to second base. And here comes Jake Stahl. And so the Highlanders heard what I was saying and are uh, trying to get me to repent of my ways. Jake Stahl up there now rolls a 43 for a 29. That's going to be a double play. That will be a comebacker over to the pitcher, Smith, who goes over to, uh, behind him to McBride for one, on to first for the double play. Hemphill moves over to second base, but there's two away now. And here comes Neil Ball. Ball rolls a 41 for a 28. Ground ball over to the uh, shortstop. It's uh, McBride who makes that play. Throws the first for the out. We go to the bottom of the first. Jim Delahanty up there, and he rolls a 51 for an 8, and that's going to be a ground ball over to shortstop. Ball has that. Throws the first for the out. One away. Otis Clymer now. Clymer rolls a 12 for a 24. There is a little E, first of all. It's a 33, so we're out of the range. It's a ground ball again over to Ball. Throws the first for the out. Two away, and it's Bill Shipka. Bill rolls a 43, 48, 29. Come back or over to the pitcher, um, Lake, who throws the first for the out. And we'll go to the top of the second, and I'll be right back with you. All right, and just like that, we are back. And uh, it's going to be Harry Niles here at the top of the second inning for the Highlanders. Uh, two hits for the Highlanders, none from the Senators. Washington, of course, 6 and 10. They are in last place, and Niles rolls an 11. Let's see if we can get this uh, to read. There we go, 4-0. And his next roll is going to be a 15 for a 1. That's a home run for Harry Niles. That makes this a 1-0 game for the Highlanders. So he is able to go deep here at uh, American League Park. And that will bring up Hal Chase. 1-0 the ball, the uh, score. Chase rolls a 43 for a 29. That's a comeback over to Smith, who throws the first for the out. Two away. Or one away, I'm sorry. Walter Blair up there now. Blair hitting 400 this season. 429 on base percentage. 450 slugging percentage. Um, hitting pretty well, I'd say that. I would look at more of his statistics, but there's no way for me to do that, unfortunately. He rolls a 56 for a 34. There is a little E to worry about, and it's a 32, and that ends up being a little pop fly. Over to McBride at shortstop for the second out. That'll bring up Wood Conroy. I've mentioned it before. Wood Conroy has a real interesting story, one of the few players to jump from the American League to the National League and was uh, thought of as an American League spy in 1902. Um, here now, of course, with the Highlanders, 1908, they had a lot of uh, interesting characters. He rolls a 65 for a 35. That's a pop-up over to Freeman, the first baseman, for the out. We go to the bottom of the first, and it's Clyde Milan for Washington, down one nothing. And Milan rolls a 36 for a 33, and there is a little E. 43 is the rule, and he ends up popping that one over to second base to Niles for the first out, one away, Jerry Freeman. And Jerry rolls a 32 for a 26. That's a ground ball over to uh, Niles, who makes the play. <laughs> Throws the first for the out. Two away. George McBride now. George rolls a 23 for a 32. Fly ball over to right field, and uh, it's Keeler who has that for the out. We go to the top of the third. Joe Lake up there. Pitcher Joe Lake has no hits. One RBI, though. I'm not quite sure exactly how that happened. Must have grounded out somewhere. Up against uh, Charlie Smith, who I just noticed is 0-4. Lake rolls a 51 for a 23. You're not going to get any base hits. You get a 23 of 51. It's a foul ball. It's changed to a 40. Next is a 22 for an 8. That's going to be a ground ball over to McBride, who makes the play shortstop. Throws to first for the out. One away. Charlie Hemphill up there now. Hemphill, uh, one for one so far today. 230 batting average uh, and uh, had that single first inning. He rolls a 34 for 44. Another little E roll. We've seen a lot of those. 36, the next roll, and uh, that's a fly ball over to Milan in center field, two away. So with seasons that are not 1908, more modern seasons, you will still see the same number of little E rolls, but your range is going to be like 11 or 11 to 12 or something. It's a little tedious, but so it is. And it won't show up in as many cases either because your your fielding uh, uh, ratings are higher. Keeler rolls a 61 for a 40. That's changed to 39. That'll be a strike. Keeler again rolls a 6, 26 for a 27. That's a ground ball over to the left side. And Shipka, the third baseman, has that throws to first for the out. And we go to the bottom of the third. 
Bob Gainley up there now. Bob Gainley hitting 143, a player we've seen a lot of. 190 on base percentage, 161 slugging percentage. I mean, you talk about your you know replacement level players. That's what he is. He rolls a 63 for a 31. Fly ball to center field. Hempel has that for the out. One away. And here is Gabby Street. Gabby Street, a name that probably is familiar to many of you, but he's hitting 100. 100 on base percentage. Not um, the regular catcher for me, at least, because of that. And he rolls a 46, 429 as a comebacker to Joe Lake. And Lake makes the play, throws over to first for the out, two away, and it's Charlie Smith. Pitcher Smith rolls a 33 for an A, and that's going to be a single to left center field. So Charlie Smith, the pitcher, finally breaks the spell. And there is a runner on at first base with two outs here in the uh, bottom of the third inning. one nothing Highlanders. It's Jim Delahanty. He rolls a 22 for a 7, and that's going to be a base hit over to a right center field between Hemphill and uh, Keeler. And uh, Smith, with the good speed, is able to go all the way to third base, and uh, Washington has something going here. And here is Otis Clymer. Clymer hitting 328, 409, the on-base percentage, 431, the slugging percentage. You can see why I have him hitting up because we want him to get these at-bats. Otis rolls a 44 for an 8, and that's going to be a fly. Now it's going to be just a little fly ball over to center field. Hemp has that for the out. We go to the top of the four. So the Senators do manage to rally, but can't get anything out of it. Jake Stahl will lead things off. And he hit into that double play. That was that ground ball back to uh, Smith over in the uh, first inning. Jake Stahl up there hitting 233, rolls a 32 for a 26. A little ground ball over to Delahanty who makes the play. Throws to first for the out, one away. Neil Ball. He rolls a 46 for a 29. That's a hit over to uh, Smith, the pitcher, who uh, finds the snow clone in his glove, throws over to first for the out, two away. Harry Niles uh, rolls a 51 for a 10. That's going to be a single to center field. Hit number four now for the Highlanders, and that'll bring up Hal Chase. Chase, um, 0 for 1 today. Uh, and uh, it is a 210 batting average, 231 on base percentage. So he's not hitting as amazingly as everybody said that he uh, was capable of. But here you go. He rolls a 15 for an 11. That's a single, and then he ends up stealing second base. Runners now on second and third for the uh, Highlanders, and that will bring up Walter Blair. Walter Blair up there, uh, 0 for 1 so far today. Hitting 381, good average, and may turn into the starting catcher. He's not the guy I have listed as starting, and uh, he rolls a 26 for a 30. It's a fly ball over to Gainley in left field for the out. We go to the bottom of the four. So Washington able to get out of that one, and it's going to be Bill Shipka up there, the third baseman. Shipka, 288 the average, rolls a 54, 445, and uh, here is the little E roll. It's a 51 out of the range. That's just a little fly ball over to Keeler in right field for the first out. One away, Clyde Milan up there now, and he rolls a 22 for an 8. That's a base hit over to left center field. That'll bring up Jerry Freeman. Freeman hitting 215, 292 on base percentage. This is where the question comes in as to, you know, do we want to try to get McBride up there instead of Freeman with the runner on in scoring position? Taking a quick look, you can we can do this together if you want. We kind of take a quick look comparing the cards. I like these tens that I'm seeing from McBride, um, and I'm not seeing as far as base hits are concerned a whole lot of difference. And so I think that is what we're going to do. We're going to bun here with uh, Freeman, and we're going to see if we can't get McBride up there in a uh, situation to make something happen. And the roll is a 63 for a 31. We probably should have done a hit and run if we knew that was going to happen. That's a bunt over to the right side. Chase makes the play, flips over to Niles, covering the bag. Milan moves up to second, two away. And here is George McBride. McBride up there with a the runner on in scoring position, hitting 333 this season, and pretty good numbers with a little bit of power, not much. And he rolls a 54 for a 45. We can forget about the whole thing. That's a little fly ball over to Hempel in center field. He makes the catch for the out. We go to the top of the fifth. Wid Conroy up there again. Wid, as I said, very interesting uh, player, but not hitting very well. 135, should have stayed in Pittsburgh. He rolls a 56 for a 34 with a little E. 65 is that little E roll. That's going to be a pop-up over to the shortstop. McBride, one away, Joe Lake. Joe Lake, the pitcher, is up there now, and he rolls a 12 for a 24, and here comes that little E roll again. 52 is the roll, and that's going to be a ground ball over to shortstop, and it's going to be... Uh, where are you? McBride, who makes the play, throws the first for the out two away, and it's Charlie Hemphill again, one for two today with that single. Remember that in the very beginning of the game. Uh, and he rolls, Hemphill, that is, rolls a 26 for a 27. It's going to be a ground ball over to Shipkid, third base, makes that play, throws the first for the out. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning just like that, and here is Bob Gainley. Gainley so far over one today, as I said. I like his name. I remember his name, but uh, he doesn't hit very well. And uh, 
On cue, he rolls a 33 for a 7, and that's going to be a base hit over to right field, and he makes it over to first base. Runner on at first now, and it's uh, Gabby Street, the catcher. We're going to bunt with him. This is a little bit obvious of a move, and what does he do? He rolls a 33 for a 7, so that ends up being another bunt over to the right side. Chase has that, flips over to Niles behind him, and Gainley moves up to second. Normally, that's a base hit sending Bob over to third. That'll bring up Charlie Smith, who um, is not hitting much better than Street, but at least there's no double play possibility. Smith, of course, one for one today. He rolls a 54 for a 45. There is a little E roll, and the roll is in there. It's a 26, just missing the range. That's a little fly ball now over to Keeler in right field for the second out. Two away, and it's Jim Delahanty still with that runner on in scoring position. And uh, Jim rolls a 64 for a 22. That's an error, and that's going to be an error on Lake. I'm sorry, it's going to be a stolen base for Gainley with uh, the two outs. And so now there's a runner on third base for Jim Delahanty. Jim, one for two today. 329 the average, 368 the on-base percentage, slugging percentage of 414, so he does have some power with that home run, one home run, I should say. He rolls a 65 for a 35. That's a pop-up over to Ball, the uh, shortstop. We go to the top of the six, and that's the way it's been for the Senators this season. A lot of promise, not a lot of delivery, but you've seen just about all of their games because of how tightly packed this American League is. Top of the six is uh, Wee Willie Keeler, and he rolls a 35 for a 14, and he will take his base to first base. We'll bring up Jake Stahl. Stahl here so far today, 0 for 2, hitting that double play earlier on. We're going to swing away with him. That's the reason why I'm looking at that. Deciding what I'm going to do. He rolls a 26 for a 29. That's going to be a ground ball back to Charlie Smith again. Another ground ball back to the pitcher. He turns around and throws over to the uh, shortstop covering behind him, McBride covering at second. So the second time the stall has hit back to the pitcher, he's having a hard time hitting it out of the infield. One away, here is Neil Ball. Neil Ball, of course, 0 for 2 so far today. Also having a hard time getting out of the infield, but isn't everybody. It's 1908. Ball rolls a 14 for 43. Here is the little E roll. It's a 55 out of the range. Fly ball over to left field, and uh, Gainley is there for it. He makes the catch. Two gone, and here is Harry Niles. It was Niles who had that home run. That's the only run of the ball game so far. And uh, that's his third home run, by the way, of the season. So he's hitting pretty impressive with this card with all those ones in that second column. He rolls a 36 for a 32. It's a fly ball over to center field. Milan has that for the out. We go to the bottom of the six. So uh, Niles, who's the uh, forerunner of Babe Ruth, unable to get it done there. And here comes Otis Clymer. Otis rolls a 54 for a 45. Fly ball over to right field. Keeler has that for the out. One away. I tell you, Niles, second baseman. I mean, he should be more like who? Like Robinson Cano, I'm guessing? Bill Shipke up there now. He rolls a 43 for a 29. So come back over to Lake, who makes the play. Throws the first for the out. Two away. Clyde Milan up there. And he rolls an 11 for a 0. Next roll for him is a 66 for a 1, and that is a home run for Milan. And, uh, boy, I wouldn't have expected that at all. So Clyde Milan hits a home run, and that ties this ball game at 1 here in the bottom of the 6th inning. And uh, do you expect to see power like that here in 1908? I didn't. Jerry Freeman comes up now. 1-1 one, one the score. And uh, Freeman rolls a 53 for a 20. That's going to be changed to a 22. That is an air on the pitcher lake, and that'll bring up George McBride now with the runner on at first base. Both teams with five hits, only one air in the ball game. That was that air we just saw there by Joe Lake, and it's a 1-1 game. Here comes McBride. We always have to roll a little bit extra, right, when we're excited about what's happening. McBride, 0 for 2 today, rolls a 44-4 and 8, and that's going to be a single. And um, unfortunately, the runner is thrown out at third. Mark that when uh, Hemphill throwing over to Conroy, the third baseman for the out. We go to the top of the seventh. This is a ball game all of a sudden. Here comes Hal Chase. And Chase rolls an 11 for a 0 and a 16 for a 7. And so even when Chase goes uh, double column, he can't do much more than get a single. That's his second hit of the ball game. Chase now 2 for 3, and that'll bring up Walter Blair. Uh, with Chase on at first base, the question is, do we want um, Blair to uh, do a little hit and run? I always look at this card. The thing I look out for here are uh, the uh, 31s. He doesn't even have a single 31 on this card. All we have is that 44, and so I'm not convinced that we need to hit and run with him. And instead, he rolls a 46 for a 27, and so what happens is he hits into a double play. Ground ball over to Shipka, who uh, makes the play over to Delahanty at second for one, on to Freeman at first for the double play. And so, you know, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. With Conroy now, I'm pretty sure that's a double play even with a hit and run on. Conroy, two away, and he rolls a 55 for an 8, and that's a single for him, and he's then caught stealing. We go to the bottom of the 7th. 
One won the score. Bob Gainley up there now. Exciting ball game. Lots of power. Two home runs. Lots of power for 1908. Bob Gainley up there now rolls a 35 for a 40. That's changed to 36. That'll be a ball. Joe Lake still in there. 0.84 ERA. 1 and 0 is his record so far. He's pitched quite a few innings, and that tells you that he hasn't got the support that he's needed from the Highlanders' bats, and he hasn't had it today. Rolls a 21 for a 30. Fly ball over to Stall in left field for the first out. One away, and it's Gabby Street. Gabby rolls a 25 for a 9, and that's going to be a pop-up over to the third baseman, Conroy, two away. And that'll bring up Charlie Smith. Charlie, of course, hitting 067, the pitcher. And uh, he rolls a 26 for 13 and strikes out, goes quietly back to the bench. We go to the uh, top of the eighth inning, and it's Joe Lake, the uh, opposing pitcher for the Highlanders. Lake is 0 for 2 today. He has an average of 0. Has done nothing, and he rolls a 53 for a 21, change to a 20, and that's going to be an error on the second baseman. So Delahanty um, commits the error, and uh, this has actually the possibility of uh, being a uh, major play in this game uh, because, uh, you know, uh, you can't get the pitcher out. <laughs> that's going to be a problem. Here, come the, here comes the start of the Highlanders' order. And it's going to start off again, of course, with Charlie Hemphill. And now here comes the question. Hemphill hitting uh, one for three today, hitting 222. We know what Keeler can do. I think we're going to bun with Hemphill. That's a rarity for you. But we'll bun with the number one guy in the lineup, see what we can do. He rolls a 52 for a 27, which means he misses two attempts to bunt. So we'll have him roll again. This time it's a 53 for a 17. And that's going to be a single over to right field. And uh, the runner, Lake, goes over to third. And Hemphill is able to make it to second on the throw to third base. And so Charlie Hemphill almost um, runs himself into disaster by rolling that 27. And um, he then turns around and is able to get the big roll. And um, it's uh, good enough um, for uh, the uh, runner Lake to go all the way over to third base. That brings up Wee Willie Keeler, and the infield will come in. Keeler is one for two today with a walk. And has a grand total of two RBIs. Well, it's 1908. I'm going to keep saying that as long as we play these games. He rolls a 56, 432 as a fly ball over to right field. And Climber's got that one for the out. One away. That'll bring up Jake Stahl. Infield comes back in again. Stahl hitting 226. This is where the Highlanders really have problems. They can't drive anyone in. And he rolls a 34, 444. And that's a fly ball over to center field. And Milan has that for the out. Two away. Just as I told you, RBIs are pretty important. <laughs> you need to be able to drive the guy in. But here he comes. Neil Ball rolls a 66 for a zero. And uh, his next roll is a 43 for a seven. And that's going to be a single to left center field. That will score two. Ball makes it over to second base. And um, that uh, really kind of turns this game and changes the complexion of this game. That turns this game over on its head as uh, it's a 3-1 to ball game now in favor of the Highlanders without very much time remaining. Um, and so Ball ends up uh, making it happen, and uh, we go to Harry Niles now with the runner on at second base, two outs here. And, boy, Charlie Smith is kind of hard like Charlie, isn't he? Niles uh, rolls a 13 for a 14. He takes his base after the walk, and that'll bring up Hal Chase. We're going to keep Smith in there. Chase, two for three today, hitting 234. He rolls a 61 for 41, change to a 39. That's going to be a line drive over to the, uh, I'm sorry, a ground ball over to the third baseman, Shipka, who uh, makes the play himself to the bag. We go to the bob in the eighth inning. Jim Delahanty up here now for the Senators, looking to get back into this one. Joe Lake, if he can cruise the way he's been cruising this season, will be just fine. Delahanty rolls a 23 for a 29. That's a comeback over to Lake, who makes the play, throws to first for the out, one away. It's Otis Clymer now. Climber rolls a 44 for an A. That's a base hit, but then he's caught trying to steal, trying to make it happen on his own. Two away. That's hit number seven for the Senators, and that'll bring up Shipka, who's 0 for 3, hitting 279, but uh, can he do it where it counts? And he rolls a 62 for a 12. That's a ground ball over to the first baseman, Chase, who does it himself. We'll go to the top of the ninth inning. So Charlie Smith is hoping to uh, hold uh, the Highlanders to only these three runs. Up first, Walter Blair rolls a 51 for a 14. Smith giving up three walks today, no strikeouts, and that'll bring up Wood Conroy. Conroy going to bunt, and he rolls a 53 for a 20, and that's a good bunt by him. That's a uh, bunt over to the first baseman, Freeman, who flips over to Delahanty, and, and I tell you, um, Joe just drops it. This is Joe, right? Jim, I'm sorry. Jim just drops that. When you started with a J, that'll bring up Joe Lake now. He's going to bunt again. 
And uh, we got to watch out for Charlie Smith here to make sure he's not totally falling apart. Two errors now in the Senators, who had been playing well up to this point. Joe Lake going to bunt, rolls a 15 for a 10. That's a good bunt over the left side. Shipka has it, throws over to first base. All he can do with it, both runners move up. And here comes Charlie Hemphill. Infield comes in. They're going to pitch to Hemphill, who's not hitting well. And he rolls a 61 for a 40. Remember, he bunted um, up earlier. It's changed to 36. That is a pass ball on the catcher uh, street. Gabby Street giving up that pass ball makes this a 4-1 to ball game. 4-1 to here, top of the ninth, one out. Runner on third base now is Whit Conroy. And Hemphill rolls a 53 for a 17. It's changed to 19. That's going to be an error on the third baseman, Shipka, that allows another run to score. As 5-1, to one, I told you it was hard like Charlie. Wee Willie Keeler up there now, uh, one for three today, rolls a 46 for a 29. That's back to Smith, who turns around as he does so well and throws over to McBride for the force. Two away, and it's Jake Stahl. Stahl rolls a 55 for a 9. He gets a, hing, a single that uh, beats out that infield hit and uh, sends Keeler over to second. Runners now on first and second, and this game's getting out of hand. And uh, Ball rolls a 53, another 53 roll. And that's uh, changed to 22, and that's a ground ball back to Street, who, uh, I'm sorry, Smith, who makes the play and throws to first for the out. And just like that, we'll go to the uh, bottom of the ninth as we go quietly into the night. Clyde Milan with that home run and a single, two for three today. Hit his first home run of the season a little bit earlier. He rolls a 51 4 9. That's a pop up over to uh, the uh, third baseman, uh, Conroy, who makes the play for the out. One away. It's Jerry Freeman now. Two outs left for the Highlanders. And uh, Freeman rolls a 53 for a 20. That's changed to 21. That's going to be an error on the first baseman, Chase. And so two errors now for the Highlanders, three for the Senators. This game was fielded well, but then uh, the uh, evening cloud started to take over. Here is Joe McBride. Rolls a 13 for a 14, and now Lake is starting to have his problems. Runners on at first and second for Bob Gainley with uh, one out, but with a four-run uh, uh, disparity, I don't think we're going to do anything fun with Gainley. He rolls a 45 for a 14, and that's going to be a walk. And that'll bring up Gabby Street. So uh, the potential tying run is at the plate in the form of Gabby Street. Joe Lake gives up anything else. He's out of here. And the roll is a 43 for a 29. That is going to be a ground ball back to Lake, who goes straight to home with it and uh, gets it to Blair in time to force the runner. Two away, and here comes Charlie Smith. We're not going to have him hit for himself, of course. Probably could have uh, done a little bit with uh, pinch hitters before then, but uh, you have to be a little careful because there's not that many potential pinch uh, hitters on this bench. And so John Warner, the catcher, will come in. 179 the average, but a good on-base percentage. All we need is for him to get on base, get back to Jim. And there's the roll, 54 for a 45. That's a fly ball over to Keeler in right field. And Wee Willie Keeler has that one for the out, and that does it. So the Highlanders end up dominating this one, 5-1. to one. It was exciting at the end, but not quite exciting enough. And uh, Hal Chase and company are trying to uh, make me eat my words when I say I don't want them around anymore. 5-1, to one, the score. Highlanders go to 9-8. and eight. Senators are uh, uh, staking out a position in last place, as they usually do, 6-11. and 11. And I will talk with you again tomorrow. Hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.